Here you are. I'm turning mine off. It's nice to have a friend who saves your life. I ate the guava in Cairo. Complete the story. With friends like Francois who needs enemies. <laughs> what happened, Francois? Why do you always eat things that you shouldn't be eating at the wrong time? <laughs> the two of us, we travel quite a lot in the Middle East. And uh, we've had a number of experiences together. It started off all in a little town, and I've told this before, called Paro. And in a town called Paro. And if you say it quickly, it is Paro or Paro. And so we always used to end up at the same venue because he'd phone me and say, You're speaking at Paro? And I'd say, Okay, I'll be at Paro. Well, you'll be at Paro? Yes, more Paro. <laughs> And uh, that's where a lot of the confusion came in. But if you do evangelism, then you will find that you have a tremendous opposition. The devil will do everything in his power to destroy whatever you are trying to do. And uh, we can tell a lot of stories. Francois himself, he once had a melanoma, a cancer. And they said, we must remove it immediately or else you will suffer the consequences. But he had a campaign. And so he didn't remove it until the campaign was finished. And the first was staring like this while he was preaching. And in that last meeting, something happened and it just disappeared. He put God first. And so we can tell lots of little stories. But you saved my life at Petra. Twice. I didn't save you from a guava. Yes. <laughs> he ate the guava or what? It wasn't even a guava. It was a persimmon. Whatever, Walter. <laughs> now, it works like this. In the Middle East, you have to be very, very careful. Because they sell these things by weight and often to increase the weight they use an injection to inject water into the fruit to increase the weight. And they'll take just water from the Nile often there where the sewerage runs into the Nile. So your chances of picking up something uh, obnoxious are pretty good, right Francine? Now, he has this habit of never taking the short route. Why should you take the easy route if you can take the difficult one, right? <laughs> and we were in Petra. Now, there's a perfectly good road to Petra, but there's a horrendous road over the mountains where there is possibly something that you can see, but you have to cross about three or four precipices. And one or two of them very dangerous. I mean, the ledge is only like this, and if you slip, you're gone, because it goes straight down. And you chose that route, didn't you? You thought it was the guide. <laughs> yes. And we were walking along and he had eaten this doctored persimmon and was suffering the consequences. So he's not only like this on the stage, he sometimes walks like this as well. And as we were walking up the mountain, he fell. And I just happened to be behind him Unfortunately, he's, he's not very big. <laughs> so I could catch him. And I caught him like this, and there was just this precipice. 
So yes, I did, but Francie, that's not, not something that we should say here. I mean, these are just little experiences. Little drops of water, little grains of sand makes the mighty ocean and makes the mighty land. Don't ignore small things, Walter. This bonded our friendship. And we try to proclaim the three angels' messages. If I don't take him on dangerous routes, he's got nothing to tell. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to leave you because it's five past ten. You can talk for yourself. Take them on a dangerous route. <laughs> I met a French teacher. Where is she? She's got a marvelous experience bringing a Catholic lady here. Corinne, think it's Corinne? Where is Corinne? If you could run, because, yeah, that's right. Time is short. <laughs> the mic. <laughs> Does this work? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, my husband was talking to Francois, and I was really proud because I can say his name, Francois. So I went and shook his hand. I didn't realize I was going to end up up here. That certainly is a lot of people here. <laughs> you should look nervous. I am very nervous. Thank you. Do I look nervous enough? Yes. I'm a little shaking too. Can you tell? The shaking is, shaking is coming. It's coming. That's good. <laughs> so I'm ready. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to share my excitement. We were down at El Cajon. We have been uh, wa watching Walt Divide for many years. And I was very happy to meet Francois. I work for a school in Escondido, and I had this little Catholic lady who came to see me in my office with my financial brochure, and she said, I can't afford this non-SDA rate. I want this SDA rate right here. I'm a single mom, and I want to be able to pay this rate. And so I told her, we have a lot of wonderful churches. Why don't you start attending one of your churches, and I'll see what I do, can do for you and I can see what I can do for you so that you can keep your children at our school. And so she started attending one of our Spanish churches in Escondido. And about three days ago, when I uh, saw her, I said, you've got to come to Acajon. You have to listen to this wonderful gentleman who will really open your eyes on our Adventist message. And so she, lo and behold, she came down with a couple of her friends and she listened to Francois. And at the end of the meeting, I went and talked to her, and she was so excited. Never in her life, never had she heard that archaeology could prove the Bible to be true. She is so excited. Again, she's a little Catholic, Catholic lady, and she is getting ready to get baptized in about a couple of weeks. So um, thank you, Francois, for your ministry, and thank you, Walter, for your ministry. Thank you. Could you run again? I'm going to do two lectures on the life of Nebuchadnezzar. This is number one, and on Monday we'll have number two. I was so blessed when I researched his life, and Walter myself walked on his footsteps, and I'll be sharing some of it with you. Now, how many ancient sources referred to Nebuchadnezzar besides the Bible and Flavius Josephus? Zero. And the critics denied the existence of this very important man mentioned in the Bible. Now, is it safe to be skeptic until the facts are revealed? She says, yes. I think God gave us the science of archaeology 
on which to build our faith onto. You need a solid base for your faith. Well, join me and Walter on a scientific journey in search of Nebuchadnezzar. His throne name is Nabu Kuduri Usur, which means the god Nabu, son of Belmarduk, protects my boundaries. A beautiful name. And uh, here is Walter at uh, Tyre. This is still a, a future lecture. It is a marvelous fulfillment of prophecy. Now, close to Sidon is a site called the Temple of Echmun. So we went there and we saw something marvelous. Babylonian ruins, next to it, Medu Persian ruins, and next to it, Greece, and next to it, wow! All four empires mentioned, like Daniel mentions them. I was so excited. My heart was strangely warmed. Yeah, you know the story here. The ruins of four empires at Echmun Temple near Sidon cries out, the Bible is true. I was so excited. And my heart is strangely warmed. So what do you see in this picture? This is concerning Nebuchadnezzar. A stone is coming. I think that stone is very near. Is the approaching stone good or bad news? Good for those who allow the stone to break the hardness of bitterness and unforgiving spirit. Otherwise that stone will come and finish you off. Please fall on the rock daily. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands. Daniel interprets the dream, and last night I showed you the place where Daniel stood before King Nebuchadnezzar. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, not by human hands, a rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. And I like this. The great God has shown the king. Which king? Nebuchadnezzar. What will take place in the future? The dream is true. Please believe prophecy. And the interpretation is trustworthy. What are you looking at? Did you watch the news about Japan? This is what it looks like on our planet. Is there good news for tsunami, earthquake, and war victims? Yes, a rock is coming. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. Did Nebuchadnezzar see the second coming of Christ? Yes, he saw the rock. Does God care about the Babylonians? How many people came out of Babylon here? Only one, thank you. <laughs> Pastor Bob, you have to push up the numbers. <clears throat> the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord, and he shall reign. Ionios, tos Ionios, forever and ever and ever. Sorry. There's a couple of vehicles that either need to move or is left running. Just go ahead, you can speak in here, man. Oh. I'm sorry, um, there's a vehicle park here, it's an Audi A6, license plate 6KJE483, it's behind this gym, they need to move. Also, there's a gray Scion that the cars have been left on, 
uh, running. Uh, license plate 5EVY921. Pastor Dan Baloney has the keys. So if you're missing a vehicle and you want to get home, uh, please get a hold of him. Thank you. Anything else? No, that's it. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do you wish them a good Sabbath? Yes, I think we do. Hopefully those uh, owners will uh, move those vehicles. Thank you very much. Can I wish you a better Sabbath? <laughs> I got to go teach Sabbath school. <laughs> The new ruler is on his way. What a dream. Well, join me on my, me and my camera in search of archaeological evidences of the existence in antiquity of this great man. And I searched a lot, and I traveled a lot, but I've got the info. And I'm going to share it today and on Monday. Now this is a very interesting place called Nar El Kelp. Nar in Arabic means what? River. We've got a few educated people here. And Kelp? Dog. Yeah. It flows next to a mountain ridge that looks like a dog. And uh, it's a very interesting site. I cannot share all the facts with you here. Let's concentrate on a few. I'm right at the back here, researching Nar El Kalb in search of Nebuchadnezzar. And when you walk up there, you see inscriptions, but they are vague and not very interesting, good looking, like an old man in search of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, ancient literature associates Nebuchadnezzar with Nar el Kil. I got this in some literature. Uh, time has erased some of the important messages. But uh, here we look at something. Hieroglyphics. Is it? Or is it cuneiform? What would you say? Cuneiform, yes. You recognize the man there? Who is he? Wrong. <laughs> a careful reading, you didn't read the cuneiform well, tells it that this is not Nebuchadnezzar, but an Assyrian king. And the Lebanese guide tells me this is Esar Hadon. He's mentioned in the Bible. Does the Bible mention his name? Yes. This makes me excited. You're looking at the Lakish relief of his father. Who was his father? Begins with a sen. Senekere. Yeah. It says in Kings 19, 36 and 37, so Senekere. And it's interesting to, to look at the meaning of the names. King of Assyria departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adremelech and Sharezer, his sons, smote him with a sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia. I've got a lecture on Armenia. And Esar Hadon, his son, reigned in his stead. This was after an angel killed how many Assyrians? Hundred and eighty thousand in one night. Where are we? We went to Nineveh. This place is called Nebi Yunus. I believe Jonah was buried here. I was so excited when I walked here. An historic moment. They discovered his temple and the arsenal of Ezra Hadon. And Saddam Hussein did a great job here. He removed 400 families in order to do excavations in spite of Islamic law which says you cannot remove people. So we are indebted to the man 
in some way or other. Don't tell the Bush family this. <laughs> While I held my only daughter, waited nine years for it, to my side, I said to Loretta, the Bible is the most reliable book. We're standing next to an image of Esar Hadon. It is a message from heaven. Nothing is unimportant in the Bible. Read it, fill your minds with the great truths of the Bible. You remember this? We were here just now. Nariel Kelp, Esaradon. So while searching here, I've been to Lebanon a few times. Will I ever find inscriptions of King Nebuchadnezzar? He was here according to the Bible, and I kept on searching. With this guide, her name is Francoise, she's a French lady in Beirut, and a professor from our university, Middle East University. Would they be able to guide me to the place? Well, a history of the Babylonians and the Syrians the title of this book, G.S. Goodspeed, he says, Nebuchadnezzar not only called himself conqueror of the Westland, but reached the Mediterranean and left his name upon the cliffs of Nar el -Kalp. So the ancient literature told me to go and search for him at Nar el -Kalp. Do you recognize the man here? It's my friend. It's so nice to get a touch when you're in a strange land. <laughs> this is the only touch I get from people in the Middle East, I mean in America. Thank you. Thank you. Give me a hug as well, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is so marvelous. So we have to search for Nebuchadnezzar right here. For many years I ascended these steps in search of this famous man. But they say perseverance is the master of defeat. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Especially on yourself. At last I found it. How? Well, you know, because of the political unrest, there was no one to show it to me. And I was asking and searching. But perseverance is the master of defeat. If you're planning to, to divorce your spouse, just stay with him or her. You cannot grow without problems. And men are meant to be loved, not to be understood. Can anybody read this Greek word? Kureiko. I'm in an educated audience. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was so difficult to get down here. They, help, they had to help the old man. I always wear a red hat so that they could see me. <laughs> so I went down here and I shouted, Eureka, Eureka. The verb is Eurisco. Have you heard of Archimedes? This is where the word comes from. Can I quickly tell you what, what happened, how this word was born? Okay. This is him. Maybe you know the story, but for those who don't know it, let's quickly read it. This exclamation, Eureka is most famously attributed to the ancient Greek scholar Archimedes. He reportedly proclaimed Eureka when he stepped into a bath and noticed that the water level rose. What a discovery. I've discovered it long ago. <laughs> he suddenly understood that the volume of water displaced must be equal to the volume of the part of his body he had submerged. There you see the man. Is he good looking? 
No, okay. <laughs> this meant that the volume of irregular objects could be measured with, a preci with precision, precision, a previously un uh, in intractable problem. He is said to have been so eager to share his realization that he leapt out of the bathtub. I'm not going to read the rest of it. <laughs> you know, we must become excited about the Bible and its truth. But put on your clothes when you do it. <laughs> Eureka! Eureka! Archimedes. I thank Professor Kuri from Middle East University of Beirut who showed me this inscription. We searched together, we found it. Guess what happened to my heart when I looked at the cuneiform inscription of Nabu Kuduri Usar? Strangely warm. The book of Daniel is authentic. Don't let people tell you it's a myth. Written by Porfiri a few years before Christ was written in the 6th century BC. Guess what happened to my heart when I looked at the cuneiform inscription of? Yes. I love this. You think he'll be in heaven? I'm looking forward to that day. You know, I like to discover facts about people mentioned in the Bible. They become real to me. Why? This is an engraving inside an onyx stone eye in Marduk, in a Marduk statue that depicts Nebuchadnezzar II. I don't think he looked so funny as this. I think that the craftsman was in a hurry. His nose should have been a little indented here. But here you look at the evidence, another one that there was a man like Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel and Jeremiah predicted that he would become ruler of the ancient world. People who rejected the prophecy suffered. Never reject prophecy. And you know what? We have a prophet. She's got good advice. She's got good advice. Where are we now? This is the Pergamon in which city? Ishtar, yes. Are you educated? Is this just normal knowledge? Yeah, is that your husband? Not. I think he will feel inferior if he marries you. Now, does archaeology confirm the existence of Nebuchadnezzar? Yes, it's on the Easter Gate in, in Berlin. And this is the ancient procession way. This is what Daniel, Saddam Hussein repaired 180 meters of this procession way. A wonderful thing happened here every year, every new year of the king's reign. But you can read it in Isaiah 45. It says in Daniel 4.30, the king spoke and said, I don't think he was American, but let's carry on. Is not this the great United, no, sorry, Babylon, that I've built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. What do you call this type of speech? Arrogance, megalomania. He eventually lost his mind. The more you use the personal pronoun, the more insane you are. By the way, here we are again in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. A lady working on this. By the way, this procession way was a kilometer and a half leading from the Ishtar Gate to the Etamanaki. And people would crowd there. This is what Daniel saw. 
when he lived there. This scholar working here will tell you that Nebuchadnezzar was really the builder of the new Babylon. Restoration of the regional East Dog. I just look at this. This is what Daniel saw. Did he say anything about building Jerusalem, uh, Babylon? Did Nebuchadnezzar mention this? Now the Bible says, let's see what archaeology says. Here it is. Walter uh, drew my attention to this. Do you prefer Babylonian kiniform or English? What should I read? English, okay. This is what he writes. I laid the foundation of the gates down to the ground water level and had them built out of pure blue stone. There you see it. Upon the walls in the inner room of the gate are bulls and dragons, and thus I magnificently adorned them with luxurious splendor for all mankind to behold in all. The most beautiful city ever built. Walter and myself visited St. Peter's when Pope John Paul took the divine service. I want to tell you Babylon is hypnotic. The old one and the new one. This was one of the greatest discoveries we've made. God led us to this place. You won't find this on the internet. Some of this stuff you will not find there. But here it is. You are privileged to see. And we search an entire day to get this site. You are invited to the greatest revelation of Nebuchadnezzar. This will be in my next lecture. A thousand cuneiform tablets with the name of Nebuchadnezzar cry out, the Bible is true. And it's so wonderful to see his name on cuneiform. And every time I read his name, my heart is strangely warm. The Bible is true. Believe it. Don't let anybody tell you it's myth. This is a chronicle. They've discovered many clay tablets, including the first Babylonian capture of Jerusalem, 605, and then the second one, the British Museum made a mistake here. It's not 595, five, it's 597. So we all make mistakes. No, don't condemn them. Let's carry on. Did this cruel tyrant repent? Yes. Eventually, after 60 years of his first repentance. So don't give up on a family member that's not accepted the Lord yet. Just keep on praying. How can I prepare for citizenship in heaven to meet Nebuchadnezzar one day? Uh, by the way, where are our enemies located? Outside or inside? Where is the greatest enemy? Simul justice et peccator, says Luther. At the same time saved, at the same time lost. This fallen nature of mine is my greatest enemy. I've got to fight him continually. I fight him now, he gets up and he fights back. Have you noticed that? And he works through your wife and your husband and your children. He's brilliant. We have to stay on our knees. Why are they continually tempting us to sin? What does sinning do to us and those around us? How can we avoid the mess? Listen to the psalm 199 and 11 how can a young man cleanse his way a b by taking heed according to your word there is power in this book if you cannot overcome read the bible this is what it says with my whole heart i've sought you Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin 
against you. A beautiful poetic structure. Read the Bible, meditate on it, use your imagination, and let the Bible read you. Not only you reading the Bible, he reveals sins in your life and he sends you to a savior. Do you want to sharpen your intellect? This is what Ellen White wrote. As a means of intellectual training, the Bible is more effective than any other book or all books combined. Wow. You've got the best piece of literature in your hands. I was so happy to be here and to see the Bible is true. The greatness of its themes, the dignified simplicity of its utterances, only six days to create a planet, the beauty of its imagery, quicken and uplift, quicken and uplift the thoughts as nothing else can. Do you want noble thoughts? Read the book. It changes you. No other study can impart such mental power as does the effort to grasp the stupendous truths of revelation. The mind thus brought in contact with the thoughts of the infinite cannot but expand and strengthen. You want to lift your IQ? Read the Bible. It changes people. I've seen this throughout my ministry. Do you know this song? Sing it. And this is what Walter and myself are telling people. There's a book. Believe it. Allow it to change your life. Till night shall vanish. In eternal day. No more tears. No more heartaches. No more loneliness. He's coming. The Bible says he's coming. This is just the beginning. Don't miss out on the next episode on the life of Nebuchadnezzar. Monday evening. Where's Pastor Bill? Can you also run like that lady? <laughs> Show them. Thank you, sir. If I was as young as that lady, I could run. If I was as young as you are, I could run. Let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer, shall we? The Bible is true. Your word is free. Your word is power. Your word is for me. Thank you, Lord, for that power. In Jesus' name, amen.